Hello and welcome back to my channel What If Deku 2.0. Join us as we delve into the realms of fanfiction and fantasy, bringing you the best stories and discussions. Today we're kicking off part 5 of our series, What If Deku Became the Villain Emperor? If you enjoy this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more content in the future. The author of this story is Decuverse from Archive of Our Own. All the relevant links are in the description. Feel free to say hello to the author on their profile. Now let's dive into the fanfic. Deku was sitting on one of the couches in the large living room in League of Villains's hideout. The young mastermind was writing on his notebook labeled as How to Destroy Hero Society No Degree 7, with a thoughtful look on his face as he examined the contents of his notebook and added on them. In the room were the members of Team Terror doing their own thing and Deku looked around at everyone and smiled in it content. Kana was reading a light novel about the roots of corruption in the hero system in societies, Written but unfortunately the government unpublished the book and imprisoned the writer which is just typical, the commit suicide in prison. Kana seemed very focused on the book. Deku was happy he got this poor woman out of her imprisonment, she seemed to fit in quite nicely but for the past month and for the life of him he didn't know why she was starting fights with Stain, well he is the one to start a fight but she indulged him every time and they almost kill each other every time. It was really annoying he was happy he didn't have a quirk that revived the dead or they would have killed each other a million times by now. In the other side of the room the three young children could be seen playing video games while sitting on bean chairs while chatting about something or another. All of them engrossed into the game and not focusing on anyone around them. They looked adorable and Deku snapped a picture of them for himself. He might be a villain and a horrible one but he had an appreciation for cute things. Gentle and La Brava were drinking tea together and chatting happily while looking over how many hits their last video got. Deku and Gentle robbed an HPSC facility yesterday and made one hell of a show while doing so outrunning and fooling with the heroes that it was a travesty. The video became viral in an hour and La Brava made sure it wasn't taken down and it wouldn't be any time soon. Stain was sharpening his word with a wet stone and checking his equipment. Even when not on the clock the man is still working. He was the embodiment of relentless determination. He was always focused on his objectives, he married the concept of killing fake heroes for the creation of a more just society. Deku agreed with the man on some level, there are heroes that are just irredeemable. Monsters that should be slaughtered, so instead of stopping him Deku made sure the hero killer went after those who had it coming. Then there was Shinso, they spoke on an online forum and after few weeks of chatting and bonding the boy told his story, it was similar to Deku in nature. His application was refused because of his villainous quirk and Deku would bet his very quirk it was Thunderbolt who was behind it. The no degree 3 hero and the president's most loyal lapdog. So after he was denied the chance to be a hero, to prove the world wrong about him Deku offered to meet in person in condolences. And well it seems that Deku didn't even need to tell the boy about how much society sucked because well, he knows so they just shared their own experiences about the living hell that is middle school. The indigo haired boy was obviously all in when Deku told him about the league, that everyone there had a villainous quirk and that no one there is judged, that they were all family and stood up for each other. He didn't need to be told twice and then the Team Terror had a new member and to say Deku was fascinated by his quirk would be an understatement. Brainwash was obviously one of most dangerous quirks if you had the element of surprise. Deku will make sure that it was properly utilized to its full potential. Because if those fools of heroes didn't know something good when they saw one then it's their loss. Deku glanced at the table where Melissa could be seen working on blueprints for costumes and support gear for everyone. The girl was insulted by everyone's bare amount of support gear and equipment that she gave Deku a fierce tongue lashing but in his defense that's why she was here. Melissa Shield was probably the hardest person to recruit not only for the fact that he had to sneak into I Island and find the chance to speak to her but also for her sheer intelligence and loyalty and closeness to All Might. But thankfully the quirkless experience made them bond but it was still hard and she was close to giving him to the alarm system but he went prepared. He went after getting a quirk called Memory Link that let him show her his memories. So he showed her everything from the bullying, abuse neglect to the sneers and insults and the beatings by Bakugo and everyone else. And the final nail in the coffin was the sludge villain incident. To say she was a crying mess after he showed her the all might tell him that his dream was impossible just like that and walk away filled the girl with pure unadulterated rage. Then he decided to expose her father's plan on the iExpo to get the whole island attacked by hired villains for a goddamn device that he destroyed and kept a decoy before the meeting. Not keeping something that dangerous around made the girl furious. He let her confront her father and he couldn't help but eavesdrop and boy wasn't that one hell of a family drama. By the end of that talk she despised her father and uncle with her very being and the best part is that he didn't need to use any manipulation. He just showed her how the quirkless outside I island are treated, exposed the corruption of those heroes to her and voila. 
he got himself a genius support engineer that would in a couple years rival David Shield. To say Deku felt content right now would be an understatement. He was so proud of himself for how the league was turning out. The feeling of contentment filling the young mastermind to the brim. This contentment is the exact reason why he briefly thought about strangling his brother when he spoke up from his 20 hours slumber just to give a piece of news that Kurogiri delivered from the bar. But because he's a good person he restrained himself. And just smiled in a dark way with his left eye twitching uncomfortably. That overhaul guy is still demanding a meeting with the league. Since the you took your operation he's been relentless. It's really starting to piss me off, Tamura snarled. His hands flexed as he actively worked against the urge to scratch. Deku groaned loudly. I was trying to forget about that, Tamura. Why do you have to remind me of that prick's existence? I know but the problem obviously isn't going away despite us ignoring it. Tamura drawled skeptically as he looked at his irritated boss. You think we should check it out? Deku asked looking away from his notebook for a bit but begrudgingly. Anything to get that fucker to leave us alone. If he decides to piss us off when we get there we can just kill him and the problem is really gone. Tamura offered with a grin. There's an idea. Deku sighed and dragged himself off his chair with a groan. Alright. Let's do it. Wait now? Tamura said surprised. Yes now. You're the one that brought it up. Besides, I already made the effort of standing up so there's no going back now. Let my team know that we're leaving in 10 minutes? Deku said shooing his brother off. Shouldn't we call overhaul first? Tamura asked skeptical of Deku's urging. No. He's been a pain in my ass. He doesn't get the privilege of a courtesy call. I want to see exactly what it is they're doing anyway and I can't do that if they're expecting us and hiding all the dirty details. Deku said with a frown. He seriously hated Kai Chizaki. And wished for a reason to get that guy a piece of karma pun intended because he was the type Deku hated. Fair enough. Tamura pulled himself to his feet and left to go inform Team Terror of their unscheduled trip. But to be fair none of them are going to disagree with Deku. Heck no one in the league does. Deku wouldn't say it out loud but he was mildly curious about what operations overhaul had going on. There was talk of cork erasing bullets and the thought of such a thing was not something Deku liked unless it was a severe emergency. He especially didn't like the thought of the Hero Commission hearing of such things and seeking it out for themselves. If they got their hands on something like that things could get tricky and Deku liked the degree of freedom he had at the moment. He wasn't interested in staying home all the time unless a mission popped up, unlike Tamura who could eat, sleep and breathe video games. Deku just wasn't that type of guy. He was an active person who always looked forward to the next act and plan. It's what made him the mastermind he is now after all. The two leaders stood face to face with their subordinates behind them, acting as bodyguards. Looking at his opposition, Chisaki was honestly pretty surprised that the rumored karma was still so young. At first glance he looked like a mere teen though granted not many teens have pale white skin and snow white hair, red shining eyes and a group of legitimately serious looking villains at their backs. Stain the hero killer and Lady Nagant to be precise. So, let's start with a bit of context. Overhaul opened up the meeting. Prior to the rise of heroes, there were gangs after gangs of criminals just like you, terrifying ones, ones who thought of themselves like gods, and yet all that remains of them today are but rumors, legends and stories. Villains nowadays are but an artifact of a bygone era. Chizaki explained with a sigh. So I've heard. Replied Deku. Sensei used to tell me stories of the era of villainy, before All Might started his crusade to purge the world of these villain leaders. Deku said with a scowl hidden beneath his mask. Destro, the leader of the Meta Liberation Army, Jiren, the king broker of the underworld, and Atrocity all for once former second in command, these people, whose mere mention of the name can send shivers down the spines of the common folk back in the day will nowadays lead to confusion and laughter, and maybe a few curious Google searches. Chisaki continued, My point is, villains nowadays have been casted aside, thrown into the shadow of the hero's glory. We are now but tools to their success. Chizaki said in disgust. But many villain groups are on the rise, and even causing havoc and making a shadow war. Izuku pointed out, and now there are many lesser thugs that are up over their heads, thinking that this is their chance. Deku said with an eye roll. It's the fall of all for one that led us here. As long as the heydays of villainy, he was always recognized as the emperor, the kingpin, ruling the criminal underworld. The villains of this generation treat him like an urban legend, while the old timers either fear him or admire him. He was the villain equivalent of the symbol of hope. Only the hope he brings are given to a much different crowd, Chizaki said with thoughtful look. His tone of voice changed upon mentioning all for one, as he looked at Deku with critical eyes as if judging him. And now here I stand face to face with the heir to the throne of the dark underworld, 
the one many call the Prince of Darkness. I should be flattered meeting with such a living legend, but so far, I'm more disappointing than anything else. Chizaki frowned under his mask. Your point being? Deku raised a brow, if foresight was correct the time is getting closer to what he expected to be the changing moment. Do you know what it's like to be regarded as a god? To be seen as someone far greater than one actually is? My point being you may have the rights to the throne, but you do not deserve to hold such power. I possess everything that you have and more. All that we're lacking is money? Chizaki said casually. Hearing this, Deku let out a small chuckle in amusement, realizing what the man was planning. He wanted to feel insulted but. He just couldn't be anything but amused at this 30-year-old amateur. He was almost 20 years younger and he could do a much better persuading. Was this what his sensei meant by saying there was a lot of dramatic idiots playing mafia around? He couldn't help but chuckle. You want us to join you don't you? He asked trying desperately to hide the amusement in his voice but it was for naught as it was obvious he saw them as a bunch of amateur fools. First, you are very young and have no experience. Second, you have a lot of enemies that you can't handle and all you have to back up your claims are a bunch of flashy robberies. Third, the claim of you being the quirkless king disappeared when your quirk somehow bloomed a while ago and you seem too childish for leadership, that's all that I'm saying. Chizaki replied casually. Stain and Nagant were on the verge of charging at Chizaki to behead him but Deku held up his hand to stop them from murdering their possible partner. The two stopped obediently, they shot the bird-masked boss a murderous glare filled with malice but stayed put. And what about you then? What brilliant plan do you have? What can a small-time Yakuza group like you possibly have or do to pique my interest? You are not as special as you think, so why should I waste my time on you? Asked Deku in boredom causing Chizaki to scowl at the boy's disinterest and absolute dismissiveness. The Yakuza boss got up in response, lending the green-haired mastermind a briefcase, containing a few bullet-like syringes with different colored liquids inside of them. Blue, black, green and curiously red. Quirk enhancers, triggers, weakeners, injectors we have them all but most importantly we have an experimental one, one that can erase other quirks permanently. Chizaki said proudly as he eyeing at the mastermind's expression with a pleased expression on his face. Deku froze at the sudden revelation with his eyes wide in surprise. So then what do you have? Asked Chizaki, what can you bring us that stands out from the rest of the crime gangs? The Yakuza boss inquired with a skeptical look. Deku just snapped his fingers and then three spots in the air started oozing out a black liquid that started expanding so quickly that in three seconds three gnomas from the second generation were in the room. And after a second snap two of the first generation came as well into the room. So, do you like my bioengineered multi-quirked super soldiers? Why are you so calm Chizaki-san? The gnomo ate your tongue? Deku asked smugly as he shot the bird-masked boss a look of triumph. Enjoying and reveling in the boss's stupefied expression. Chizaki seemed to be unable to answer that question, as he was too dumbfounded by the beast standing before him. Seeing this face of shock made the green-haired mastermind grin smugly, as he leaned back on the couch and waited his answer. Stain and Nagant smirked at each other as they glanced at the fool staring dumbfounded at their boss's property, which he had in dozens of and could get more easily if he wished. I, er. Chizaki was unable to answer as he stared at the fascinating beasts in disbelief. He was imagining all the things he could do with these. Supreme soldiers under his command. Deku leaned forward and smirked. Give me the perfected bullets and you will get them for free. In fact I think I could. Take you under my wing maybe? Show you how a true leader operates and maybe you will get closer to my level? Deku offered and the Yakuza boss snapped out of his trance at that suggestion very insulted but couldn't deny how disadvantaged he is in this deal. Why you insolent dash, Chronostasis grabbed a gun from inside his robes just to be slammed into a wall hard as his arm was bent behind his back in a painful angle about to snap from place. Gah. The robed man cried out in agony as Stain was pointing a blade to his throat and twisted the arm further making a cracking sound. Aha. Uh -huh. Threat the child of prophecy again and I will cut your head off. Stain said darkly as he pulled the blade closer making a small cut. Mimic would have moved if it weren't for the sniper lady about to blow his head off with a bullet from her riffle. My bullets can move at the speed of three kilometers at a second. Don't move or else. Kana threatened as she pointed her riffle at him. Chizaki would have moved if it weren't for the dark blade at the side of his throat from the transformed child whose red eyes were shining wildly and the whites of it became pitch black, dark lightning was pouring out of the eyes like the energy could barely be contained inside his body. And the worst is that the five gnomas were surrounding the Yakuza boss from all angles trapping him in place. I believe this is a civil meeting, no Chizaki-san? So why don't we all calm down and stand back? 
Deku asked politely as his arm went back to normal and his quirk was deactivated as he warped the Nomis away. Chizaki sighed in relief at not being beheaded or beaten to death by the beasts and nodded his still intact head. Everyone stood down and backed away to their previous positions to resume their talk. Well Chizaki-san as punishment for this childish acts, you will give me a copy of the perfected bullets and we will arrange a new meeting. Or I'm afraid that we no longer can work together? Deku said plainly as he glanced to the door in boredom. Chizaki really wanted to shout or attack for this brat's insolence but he knew he will be killed on the spot if he moved a muscle. So he swallowed his pride and nodded his head in grudging acceptance of the terms. It was then that the room's door burst open as a small figure ran into the room, it was small white-haired girl with pale skin and red eyes that had a horn sticking out of the right side of her forehead. She was barefoot and wore an old hospital gown and had bandages wrapped around her arms and legs. Stain and Kana looked surprised, Krano and Mimic were annoyed and Chizaki was furious at this interruption. The girl ran at the spot Deku was sitting and grabbed into his arm. P please help me. Save me? The little girl pleaded as she looked at Deku with terrified pleading eyes. The sight of the girl's frightened face as she clutched his arms her bandaged ones, trembling in fear and staring at the red eyes and imposing dark figure of his was heart-wrenching for the young mastermind. She looked almost like what would have happened if Urarika-san's or Togasan's eyes were attached to a puppy, a small, trembling, frightened, abused puppy on the side of the dark cold streets of Kamino Ward. Oh, so not only weapons dealing but also human trafficking. Nice taste Mr. Yakuza. Stain snarled as he gripped his katana tightly. Kana summoned her riffle and Chizaki tried his hardest not to growl, he steeled himself as he replied calmly to the skeptical guests who were glaring at him. This is my daughter, she gets rebellious sometimes, it's normal. Chizaki lied in such an obvious way that Deku prepared to murder Chizaki and drop the deal. Looking down at her, examining her face, the young mastermind then looked back at Chizaki with narrowed eyes. This does not look like the face of a rebel, Chizaki. She looks terrified. Deku replied with an ice-cold tone. Yes, because I just scolded her. Chizaki explained irritated, Oh, Deku knew that type of bullshit all right. You went a fucking Aldra thank you so much. For misbehaving? I don't think girls just wrap bandages around their arms for fun, unless you're telling me it's all part of your scolding. The Deku said about to snap his fingers and Chizaki panicked at that. She's a bit clumsy and often falls down. Chizaki said quickly in panic. That still doesn't explain why she would be this scared of you, Chizaki-san. I've seen spoiled kids throwing tantrums and trust me they're usually screaming their lungs out, yelling about how much they are the best of the best and that they get what they want and swearing with their surprisingly rich vocabulary. This isn't some kid throwing a tantrum, Chizaki-san. Deku said his fingers twitching. Don't go comparing my kids to common spoiled brats. You just wouldn't understand. Responded Chizaki frustrated and terrified. Knowing that there was no way to make Chizaki admit what he was doing, he had no choice but to play along. The young mastermind put his hand on the girl's head. You cursed disease child. You are my property Aerie. You will never escape me. Your blood is all you are good for. You're nothing but a living weapon. Deku's eyes almost burst into tears as he saw the little girl's memories. This was, this was, evil. He saw and did many things in his Kara but he is drawing a line here. Hey let her go. Krano tried to pull her but one glare from the young mastermind made the white-robed man step back on instinct. Eri? Was it? Deku asked putting his hand on top of Eri's head with a smile. This man so warm. He is different. Eri thought. I am busy with your father now but later I will bring my kids to play with you, and you will be very happy. I promise? Deku said gently. Eri can you hear me? Don't talk just think. Deku thought. Why is I I can? Eri stuttered. Good wait for a couple more days and I will come save you. I promise. Deku cooed gently. Are really? Of course. Deku smiled then scowled at Chizaki. What are you doing to her? Deku asked sternly. He already saw but now he gotta play along. Hearing this though, while the Yakuza boss's face stayed the same, the underworld future king could easily feel his anger and aggressiveness and he was anticipating the fight between them. Humph. I swear some people are just so damn sensitive it's pretty annoying. Chizaki commented as he begun to remove his gloves under the table like he was somehow being secretive, some kids are just so hard to understand. Frankly it makes me so frustrated sometimes. Just then Eri noticed that Chizaki was gonna attack and Deku who wasn't phased in the slightest by the bird-masked man. I could almost kill someone, Chizaki drawled. Before Chizaki's glove could be fully removed, Eri jumped out of Deku's reach and obediently ran to Chizaki. Done with your little tantrum I see. 
Chizaki said as Eri's face was sealed in an emotionless mask with her eyes empty. Eri? What are you? Deku asked in surprise, until he realized that Eri was trying to protect him from Chizaki. The fact that such unspoken horrors were done to such a sweet and adorable little girl who was being described as a rebellious brat, despite it all being a lie, made the green-haired mastermind's blood boil madly. As the girl was taken away Deku let out a sigh as he decided to keep his temper in check. Deku decided. To get back on topic as he was left alone with Chizaki and the men looked uncomfortable to say the least which was good. So where were we? Chizaki asked quietly as he looked at his green-haired counterpart with hope. Deku hummed softly in thought before snapping his fingers as he pretended to remember. Oh. We were about to seal the agreement of our partnership deal no? Deku asked as he extended his hand for a handshake. Stain and Nagant looked baffled for a second as they looked at their leader in disbelief but decided not to speak to not ruin it for him. Chizaki blinked for a few seconds before he came out from his bafflement and nodded quickly with happiness. I believe we were. Chizaki shook Deku's gloved hand with his own as the two agreed. So, the Nomus? Chizaki asked hopefully. Get me the corpses from your morgue and I'll handle the rest. Deku assured with a casual wave. Chizaki produced a black box from his coat as he offered it to Deku. This is a prototype of the perfected bullets but it still needs some work. Chizaki said as he slid the box across the table. Deku picked it up and examined the contents with a hum. Well this should do, pleasure doing business with you Chizaki-san. Deku said with a nod as he stood up and was about to leave with his bodyguards. As the green-haired mastermind was about to exit the room he looked at Chizaki over his shoulder. Tell Erichan I said hello. I will bring my own kids to play with her soon, Deku said with a smile. Will do? Chizaki said awkwardly as he glanced at his men who only shrugged helplessly. Deku sighed as he was cleaning the hand he used to shake Chizaki's with a tissue filled with alcohol. Better kill all the germs that freak my transfer after all. So, how did it go Deku? Melissa asked as she looked at Deku who sighed in annoyance. Melissa, call the heroes and give them this info. As an unknown of course. We are taking down the shy Hisaikai members and their leader. Deku explained as he handed the blonde scientist a notebook filled with info on all the members with their quirks and all. Melissa looked skeptical. What's in it for you to help the heroes like this? Kinda not your thing Deku. Melissa admitted and Deku sighed in annoyance. Sometimes the enemy of my enemy is my friend and it works in here perfectly. So yeah please give it to them. Deku said gently and Melissa nodded. The blonde scientist wasn't sure but if wanted it then he gets it. So do I prepare for war? Melissa asked and Deku nodded his head. That would be for the best. Deku smiled affectionately and Melissa blushed furiously. The scientist got up about to leave and Deku smiled at her even wider. Thank you. Melissa. I am happy you joined us. Deku said in appreciation and Melissa's blush spread through all of her face. Don't mention it chief. Just doing my job. Melissa babbled as she exited the room quickly. Deku sighed in defeat as he thought of his next step. He could always storm into the Shai Hisaikai base and kill everyone but that would cause so much fuss. His best bet would be to wait and let the heroes do the heavy lifting while he gets Eri-chan out quickly but it would take at least two days to put a raid in order. Two days of suffering for the precious unicorn who deserves all hugs of the world. Two days of that sick freak bleeding her dry and stitching her with his quirk. Oh he is so taking it alright. It will be excellent addition to his ever-growing collection which reminded him that he should visit the good doctor to acquire more quirks. He has been doing that for the past few weeks and his collection grew from his personal 7 with the 5 sensei provided to 20. As he kept on his thoughts Kurogiri, Magna and Mahoro came into his office as he called them all to help him with something related to the soon to be part of the group. Hello young master what did you call us here for? Kurogiri asked politely as he stood in attention like the two females by his sides. Deku sighed at that as he rubbed his temple in stress. Well to sum up, Kurogiri and Magna I need you to prepare a room for a five-year-old girl and it should be ready by two days. Mahoro-chan I would like you to pick some clothes since you are the same age and all. Deku explained with another frustrated sigh. As you wish young master. Kurogiri bowed. Sure thing we will get to work now. Magna said. Another girl on the club? Heck yeah. Mahoro pumped her fist in the air in celebration as she bolted to her room. Deku chuckled at the girl's enthusiasm and the two adults bowed before exiting themselves. He thought of something as he sit in his office, a memory she thought of. A blonde boy in a costume let Chizaki take her even when she was in his reach to save. Heroes were disgusting. Hold on Ari you are going to be fine. Selena Gomez. Hello is this the U. A group chat? The brain? And who might you be? I spy. Yes who are you? Need nap? 
And how the hell did you hack into our systems? Selena Gomez. Irrelevant. Super Punch. Who do you happen to be? Selena Gomez. Someone who hates a specific villain organization that happens to do despicable human experiments that makes me sick. The brain? Please. Continue. No. Need nap. We are listening intently. Very intently. I spy, and this organization is? Super Punch. How do we trust you? Selena Gomez. You can't but that only matters if you are hesitating in taking the risk to save an abused child. Super Punch. I am all air. Need nap. If it's an abused child then it's personal. The brain? And those unpleasant people are? Selena Gomez. Shai Hisaikai. I spy. You have any proof on them? Need nap. Yes we can't do a thing if we don't have evidence. Super Punch. Do you have any proof? Selena Gomez. Too much? Need nap. I am afraid of asking. The brain. Well that's great we will have a team storming in in some time this week. Selena Gomez. Get me an exact time so I could run for the hills, no need to be caught in that mess. I spy, two days tops. Super punch, we will see about that. Selena Gomez. Hope you are true to your word. Magnificent. In just two days you turned what we were going to burn away into supreme soldiers. Chizaki exclaimed in amazement as he looked at the ten tanks filled out with Nomus. Deku nodded his head. Yes I always deliver Chizaki-san. Always but how are the perfected bullets coming? I am willing to fund but you gotta prove it to me that you can make more. I don't like wasting money like that. Knowing that the entire facility was gonna be overrun with heroes, whatever answer he comes up with wouldn't matter, and although he really wants to wear out the man's patience, he knows that telling him exactly what he wants to hear would distract him much more in contrast to pissing him off. Chizaki turned to Deku and nodded his head. Yes of course we have been successful at making the perfected bullets karma. And we are more than willing to with you. While the meeting was going on, Eri lied in bed as despite being given a nice room, a warm bed and tons of candy and toys, everything around her still felt soulless and empty. She had her arm, where she remembered feeling the kind stranger's warm hand. It was a feeling she had never felt before. All this time people come in wearing smiles like masks, that man whose face she was unable to fully see, seemed to radiate the most genuine and loving smile she had ever felt. But it was useless, she knew that as long as Chizaki was there, she would never escape. She turned her face into the cold pillow thinking about that kind boy, and how it was gonna be the last time she was gonna see of him, and she sobbed. Hey, don't cry Eri-chan, it'll be alright. A mysterious voice was heard. Yeah you're safe now. Follow us. Another mysterious voice said. That's what most of Eri's visitors say to her, before sticking a needle into he arm or cutting off a piece of her skin. She clutched her pillow, knowing that whoever was there they meant no good. She would have thrashed and yelled and cried, but she has learned that doing so would only lead to her captors dropping their kind demeanor to slap her quiet. Knowing what was to come, it only made her sob louder. Until she felt a pair of hands the same size as hers gently pull her out of her bed. As she opened her eyes she saw two kids hair age with the most reassuring smile she ever saw. Hello there Eri chan father sent us to pick you up. Time to go home. The boy said extending his hand to her. Yeah come on. This room is like a torture chamber in some creepy horror movie. The girl with a pink dress said grabbing her other hand and walking her out of the room. She was scared but followed anyways. As the two walked her through the halls she noticed that it was awfully quiet today she wondered why. Outside the building where several of the gang guards were perched, they noticed several police cruisers pulling into the driveway, and legions of policemen flooded out of said car. Seeing this, Chronostasis, Chizaki's head advisor, ran to inform his boss. While that was happening, the pro heroes had also arrived on scene. Several big name heroes were already at the door, such as Ryukyu, Fat Gum, Night Eye, and many more. Chizaki, we have a problem. The heroes, they are at our door, yelled Chronostasis. Besides me and Mimic, all the right bullets are gone. What? Chizaki yelled back. How was this possible? The heroes were never this bold before. Then it hit him as he turned to Deku who gave him a smile. I suggest you run unless you rather fight an entire army of heroes. And shouldn't you try to evacuate your daughter? Deku asked cheerfully. Hearing this made Chizaki even matter, not because of Izuku's attitude, but because he knows that the kid was right. They aren't prepared for a hero attack of this magnitude. Even if he kills this bastard he won't have time to evacuate Eri. I believe this the moment we start fighting? Because I have been waiting for this, but then again I have a far better opponent for you. Deku said cheerfully and just then someone popped out of the dude wall and punched Chizaki straight in the face and sending him flying into the Noma room and out of it. In the same time as he backhanded Krono sending him back. Who do you happen to be? 
Mirio said looking at Deku who smiled brightly. The one who gave you the info. Now go deal with that trash of a man before he runs. Deku urged and Lemillion begrudgingly did so. Chizaki stood up after the punch and glared at the charging boy hatefully who leveled him with a cold glare of his own. Letting out an annoyed grunt, Chisaki placed his hand on the floor, as the tiles shattered like glass, before reforming into spikes, covering the entire battlefield. Mirio was unharmed, luckily. Do you have no regard for your own child? How could you monster do the things you did to her? Mirio yelled. I have no child? Chisaki coldly replied. Besides, it doesn't matter whether I destroy her or not, I can just rebuild her with my quirk. Hearing the sheer lack of care coming from Chizaki made Mirio's blood boil. But what the two did not know was that it did so even more to Deku who sent a glare at Chizaki as he watched. Besides, it wouldn't be the first time I used it on her. Chizaki added. That last line did it. The blonde boy charged at Chizaki and went for a punch to the face. Chizaki tried to block but the first phase threw and clocked the Yakuza boss in the face sending him back. Just then Krono got back up trying to fire at him. Until his face was grabbed by a now gloveless hand of Deku who grinned with mirth as the two others were to occupied with their own battle. Krono tried to pull back but Deku had a firm grip on him as he took his quirk. The energy from Krono pouring into the hole in Deku's palm who seemed thrilled. Don't waste it, no one resists all for one. Deku smirked and as he finished taking chronostasis he snapped the man's neck. Deku turned behind and covered his face just for a large blast of flames to cover him and engulf him entirely. The wall behind the green-haired mastermind was obliterated and melted to nothing. As the smoke cleared it revealed Deku looking at the new arrival with a scowl on his freckled face. His eyes narrowed and shining with mirth as he had a disgusted expression. Well 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 if it isn't the number one asshole himself? It's such a displeasure seeing you here Endeavor. Deku said mockingly as he spat the hero's name like it was poison in his tongue. Endeavor growled at the boy's insolence and disgust. Who was that villain brat to talk to him like this? Shut it you insolent rascal. A lowly villain like you had no right to speak to me like that. Endeavor yelled in outrage. You are too careless fancy ass kid. Deku looked behind to see Mirko in the flesh in the middle of performing an uppercut kick to him, which was enough for the mastermind to cross his arms and block but was sent flying backwards few meters. If I didn't have shock absorption that one would have been a close call. Deku thought to himself. Ah. You're tough kid but not tough enough. Mirko yelled as she jumped and charged at the future king with a grin on her face. Woman wait. Endeavor yelled but it was for naught. Reflex boost muscle augmentation shock absorption. Luna fall. Mirko shouted her super move as she threw an axe kick at Deku and smirked as the hit landed but her previous sense of victory vanished and was replaced with shock and confusion as the green-haired boy blocked her kick with his forearm without being damaged. The green-haired mastermind grinned sadistically as he gripped her leg with all his strength cracking her ankle and as she grunted in pain her threw her to a wall. Deku quickly leaned to the side as a small but surprisingly heavy projectile shot past him then moved to the side dodging another and another and another. The green-haired mastermind looked to see that Sir Night Eye interrupted quickly his fight with the two with his signature seals. What the heck? Endeavor Mirko and now Night Eye? Is this some hero reunion? If I was my older self, I would have bawled my eyes out by now. Deku exclaimed as he jumped backwards and he air itself shifted. F.O. Absorb for Occupy. Sense stimulated, reaction increased to 10% of full power stockpiled. The heroes tensed as dark energy started pouring out of the green-haired boy's eyes and his body got arcs of black lightning dancing around him. The green-haired boy blitzed past Sir in a second as he charged at Endeavor about to punch him but the man was fast enough to explode into flames forcing the future king to jump back. As he did so he ducked his head avoiding a kick from Mirko as he backhanded her and shot her backwards. Endeavor shot a jet of flames but Deku easily avoided the attack and shot at Endeavor. The flame hero tried to dodge but was too slow as a fist struck him in the gut throwing him back and slamming him into a wall. Then he felt something's wrap around him as he looked he saw Sun Eater and Kamui. Woods using tentacles and wooden branches to restrain him so he couldn't move. Now, Nijire Chan and Ryukyusu. Sun Eater yelled through the intercom. The wall in front of Deku exploded as three figures burst through. Eraser had jumped in with his hair floating, the man shot his, his scarf and binded Deku just as he felt his quirks leaving him, it was then that both Nijire Chan and Ryukyu prepared their attacks. In the corner of his eye Deku saw Endeavor also charging a flash fire fist, and then the attacks were unleashed on the trapped boy who couldn't move because of Eraser head scarf wrapped up around his upper body. Deku took the attacks point blank and was bodily thrown backwards just to be trapped in a large bubble of the sorts. Eraser Head kept his gaze on Deku the whole time to make sure he was secured. Target secured. 
Bubble Girl cheered loudly. It's over brat. You no longer could run. It's time to face justice and you are not getting anywhere. This is the end. Endeavor said with a smirk. Are you sure about that? How long could Eraser keep this up? One minute? Do. Nah that's generous I give him 44 seconds. Deku said cheerfully and the look of shock on the Erasure hero's face was obvious at his weakness being exposed so quickly. Deku grinned at everyone but no one could see it through his mask. And even if you managed to keep me contained it would be only the end. If I was alone that is. Deku said with an unhinged grin startling everyone. Then both Bubble Girl and Mirko were tossed out between the walls like they were trampolines until they were shot through a hole in the ceiling. The hell? Endeavor yelled in surprise. Sorry but I couldn't stand ladies in the battlefield so I invited them out. Gentle said with a flourish. Gah. Sun Eater was blasted by Nijire Chan's wave motion into a wall. Nijire Chan why? Sun Eater asked until he saw her neck wrapped in bandages by a boy in a full purple suit, a high-tech mouth mask and has bandages similar to eraser head. Nijire Chan seemed somehow under his control as she pointed her hand at herself. The boy also had Kamui Woods trapped inside his scarf. I don't like blood, but if you move I'll make her blow her own head off, understood? Shinso said and both those that trapped Deku were trapped, the irony. What the fucking hell is going on? Endeavor yelled as he dodged knife from the hero killer himself who looked annoyed. A bunch of heroes ganging up on one kid? Disgusting. Stain snarled. By the side Lemillion and Overhaul still had their long battle that seemed to be stale late as neither of them knew how to land a finishing blow on the other. Team B. Do you copy? Where are the reinforcements? Ryukyu called through the intercom system. Shout all you want. No one could hear you. La Brava cheered while she took shots of Gentle for the next video. On the outside of the base, the police were trying to force their way through the entrance but were stopped by the relentless blasts of water from Koda's Nomu form. I won't let a single one pass through. Deku stood up as he looked at the downed heroes and smirked. Bullets shot out of a hole in wall and Endeavor barely dodged them as Nagant exited from it with a frown. Hmm, he dodged my sneak attack, guess he has the power to back up his position. Kane amused. Wow how boring. Everyone looked at one of the exits of the huge room where they were fighting to see the three kids passing by. I can't believe Deku-san told us to walk through an entire base to find Eri-chan the fight six Yakuza members. So gross let's go home new sister. Mahoro pouted. Not yet big sis, the mission is yet to be over. Katsuma said nervously as the two walked in the front and behind them Eri was following terrified of what was happening. Chizaki saw Eri and charged at them quickly without hesitation. Give me back my Eri. The Yakuza boss yelled as he held his hands to attack. Mirio's eyes widened in horror as he watched Chizaki ignore him and run at the kids. Kids run? Mirio yelled but it wasn't necessary. Chizaki's world spun as the back of his head was slammed to the ground from the Namufied child's lariat. Katsuma Shigaraki, third generation Nomo, quirks, cell activation O, muscle augmentation, energy saver, shock absorption, super regeneration. You are next, Mahoro said as Sludge started coming out of her skin and giving her a new appearance as a monster materialized behind her. As everyone even those in Team Terror gape Deku just chuckled in pride at his masterpieces. Mirio dodged the beast but felt no force behind the attacks and it had no shadow of its own. An illusion? Mirio thought to himself just be hit into a wall with one of the monster's claws. They might be illusions but I can make them solid if I want. The girl grinned in triumph. Mahoro Shigaraki, third generation Nomo. Quirks, hologram, light manipulation, gas manipulation, super regeneration, physical boosters. Deku watched the chaos around him unfold as his team ganged up on the remaining heroes and sighed before walking to Eri who looked around her with fear and confusion. As he walked he passed by Chizaki so he used his quirk to create a dark blade to cut off his arms. Why you? You have planned for this all along? Chizaki said in disbelief as he was stuck on the ground armless and bleeding. Yes in fact I'd say. Deku placed his hand on Chizaki's face to take overhaul from. How you do your business disgusts me. You should build the power with your own hands you know. Deku said as he was absorbing the energy from the downed Yakuza. How many do you think have been sacrificed on the path to the power you got? Deku asked as he dropped the bastard. Actually, we could have cooperate well if your method of experiment went another way. Deku mused as he kicked the man in the face. I do agree with your notion though. Deku said cheerfully as he pulled out the black box with the perfected bullets in them. As Deku turned his back on the previous Yakuza he reveled in the cries of pain, despair and sorrow. Karma caught up to you overhaul. Deku called out cheerfully and Chizaki screamed even more. 
The bombs are set and will go off in ten minutes, chief. Melissa called out from the earpiece. Eri chan Deku called out gently. Eri perked and ran at the kneeling Deku who embraced her with love and kindness. I said I will come back for you, didn't I? Deku asked gently and he felt the crying girl nod her head. Karma. Mirio yelled as he appeared in front of the two. Eri turned her head to look at the person and she glared at the boy who let Overhaul take her away. Let her go? Mirio yelled as he charged at them. Stop. Eri yelled and Mirio stopped dead on his tracks with a look of confusion on his face and Deku picked up the girl and brought her to his chest. Said girl hugged him like a lifeline. This man. He promised to save and he did. He did not let me go do don't hurt him. He is my hero. Eri cried out and Deku smirked at the horrified blonde. Heartbreaking isn't it? Deku asked. A little girl seeing a villain like me as her hero, what has the world came into? Deku asked as he snapped his fingers. All the notion around stopped and the members of Team Terror started being covered with dark mud as they were teleporting away. Deku's last words will haunt the blonde boy for the rest of his life. If you can't save a little girl in front of you then don't disgrace the name of hero by calling yourself one. Deku shouted before. Disappearing. Lemillion looked down and stopped moving as everything around him seemed to fade out. He failed. The heroes failed and to villains no less that came Tio saved the girl. Villains did better than them. The blonde fell to his knees and cried silently. I'm sorry Eri-chan. He sobbed. The place started to detonate and as he was dragged away he could only think of Karma's last words. I'm really pathetic. Mirio sobbed. Deku watched the chaos around him unfold as his team ganged up on the remaining heroes and sighed before walking to Eri who looked around her with fear and confusion. As he walked he passed by Chizaki so he used his quirk, Living Parasite, to create a dark blade around his arm to cut off his own and they flew in the air before dropping besides him. Why you? You have planned for this all along? Chizaki said in disbelief as he was stuck on the ground armless and bleeding profusely. Yes in fact I'd say. Deku placed his hand on Chizaki's face to take overhaul from him and the man started struggling. How you do your business disgusts me. You should build the power with your own hands you know. That's what I did, and you on the other hand worked on other people's hard work, disgusting. Deku said as he was absorbing the energy from the downed Yakuza boss who was trying his hardest to break free but you no know avail. How many do you think have been sacrificed on the path to the power you got? Deku asked as he dropped the bastard to the ground earning a grunt of pain him. And here I thought we could cooperate? Chizaki grunted in pain. Actually, we could have cooperate well if your method of experiment went another way. Deku mused as he kicked the man in the face causing him to cry out in pain. I do agree with your notion though. Deku said cheerfully as he pulled out the black box with the perfected bullets in them. I'll carry on your will then. I hope you will like the work I will create. If you survived long enough to see that is. As Deku turned his back on the previous Yakuza boss he reveled in the cries of pain, despair and sorrow of said man. It felt good to hear. Karma caught up to you overhaul. Deku called out cheerfully and Chizaki screamed even more at that his screams turning from pain to hysterical. The bombs are set and will go off in ten minutes chief. Better get the target and leave. Melissa called out from the year piece. Roger that shield maiden we will be out in a minute, everyone ready for the warp? Deku said through the year piece. Yes sir. Everyone said in unison. Deku walked to Eri who was looking through the side of the door in worry and fear. It broke the white-haired mastermind's heart. Eri-chan? Deku called out gently as he knelt down to her level. Eri perked and ran at the kneeling Deku who embraced her with love and kindness. I said I will come back for you didn't I? Deku asked gently and he felt the crying girl nod her head. Karma. Mirio yelled as he appeared in front of the two. Eri turned her head to look at the person and she glared at the boy who let Overhaul take her away carelessly and even smiled at her. Let her go? Mirio yelled as he charged at them about to punch Deku in the face. Stop. Eri yelled and Mirio stopped dead on his tracks with a look of confusion on his face and Deku picked up the girl and brought her to his chest. Said girl hugged him like a lifeline and sobbed. This man. He promised to save and he did. He did not let me go do don't hurt him. Despite his carry looks and violet nature he is a good person. So don't you dare hurt him. He is my hero. Eri cried out with tears in her ruby eyes and Deku smirked sadistically at the horrified blonde's expression off anguish and torment. Heartbreaking isn't it? Deku asked as he rubbed the girl's back soothingly. A little girl seeing a villain like me as her hero, what has the world came into? Deku asked as he snapped his fingers. All the notion around stopped and the members of Team Terror started being covered with dark mud as they were teleporting away. Deku's last words will haunt the blonde boy for the rest of his life. 
if you can't save a little girl in front of you then don't disgrace the name of hero by calling yourself one? Deku shouted before disappearing. Eri braced herself as the mud enveloped her but she wasn't scared because nice mister will protect her. As the two were warped away they entered into a new room with all the nice people that helped nice mister save her. The second she felt the warmth in the air, that contrasted the cold, soulless feeling of her old bedroom, Eri felt herself at ease. As she saw some people of different outfits, opposing the similar uniforms everyone she met made her relax. They were sitting by what seemed to be a couches in the very big living room and drinking, although she didn't really know what they were drinking. As Nice Mr. walked past some of these characters, one of them, a young blonde girl, got up, running to Nice along with another girl with brown hair cut in a bob. They both looked worried. Like very very worried. She wondered why. Oh my gosh. Dekakuen, are you okay? What happened to your suit? Why do you have those nasty burns? Why do you look disheveled like this? Are you hurt? The blonde girl fussed over Nice Mr. worried. And Ari understood, Nice Mr. looks really hurt and she felt bad for getting him hurt because of her because he risked himself to save her from Overhaul's clothes. What she said. What happened Dekusama? You said it will be a quick pick and leave mission. How did you get this roughed up? Who could get you this roughed up? Will you be okay? The brunette girl kept fussing along and Nice Mr. looked overwhelmed by the two overly worried girls. Aerie shuffled slightly in Nice Mr.'s embrace and the two girls seemed to notice her and they brightened up instantly. Their gazes were warm. Oh my god. She's so cute. The girl with buns squealed energetically, looking at her with a loving gaze. It made Aerie feel warm but she was too scared to speak up. OMG OMG OMG. She is just adorable. The brunette girl squealed happily looking over Aerie with an amazed expression. Felt very nice. Easy now, Togasan and Yurarika-san, she just arrived, I think it's best if we took this a little slower. After all, wouldn't want to overwhelm our newest member like this. Nice mister said, pushing them back a little bit but they didn't seem to mind. You're right Dekusama we apologize. It's just that she is the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. The girl with a bob said sheepishly as she looked at Eri apologetically. Her eyes were warm like nice mister. Nice mister walked through the big room and Eri noticed everyone looking at her but their gazes were kind, some curious and some worried but none of them were hostile. She felt safe, probably because nice mister is still holding her in his arms which was super nice actually. She felt warm and wanted she felt safe. The two girls followed him and looked at the little girl with hearts in their eyes. They seemed to like her. Nice mister walked to a couch and placed her down and was followed by the two nice girls, another blonde miss with glasses and Mahoro-chan who helped save her. All of them smiling at her warmly. Eri-chan you are safe now from Chizaki he will never hurt you again. I promise so what would you absolutely adorable princess like to do first? Take a bath with the girls and change your clothes or eat first? You are free to chose? Nice mister said with a blinding. What are you doing with your face nice mister? Ari asked pointing to nice mister's face. He looked confused before asking her gently. You mean? Smiling? Nice mister asked what worried and slightly horrified. Ari nodded her head. Yes, I want to do that too but I don't know how. Ari looked down. Ari felt the mood change and nice mister sucked in a breath and hugged her tightly. You will learn Ari-chan I promise? Nice mister said. Wait. Nice mister, you never gave me your name. Ari said in disappointed tone. Nice mister looked at Ari surprised and the girls behind him gasped in surprise and shock. How could you forget that Dekakuen? Blonde miss asked in shock. Come on tell her Dekusama. Miss Brunette said with a pout. Forgive me my dear. My name is Deku Shigaraki. And you are in my home now. Sorry for not telling you earlier. Mr. Deku said with a big smile. His smiles were warm. I want to change I hate this clothes. Chizaki gave them to me. Eri said and Mr. Deku nodded his head in understanding. Of course Eri-chan go with the girls and get better clothes. Ones you actually like. Mr. Deku said gently as he picked up Eri and gave her to the tall blonde miss. Hello Eri-chan. My name is Melissa Shield. Call me Melissa. And don't worry. Melissa said holding Eri in her arms. We will make sure you look great. Mahoro-chan exclaimed as the girls rushed to the bathing part of the hideout. Come on little one. Miss Purple said patting her head and Ari left with the girls to bath and change her disgusting clothes to better ones. As the girls left Deku let out a long-suffering sigh filled with despair. Oh my god. The white-haired mastermind groaned as he buried his face in his hands and started mumbling curses at Chizaki and wishing him the worst time in Tartarus. Okay boss time for answers. Who's that kid and why does she look like she was an abused child that lived in a lab as an experiment rat? 
Mustard was the first to speak being the resident curious conspiracy theorist of the League of Villains. He looked too startled and disturbed which was fair honestly. The rest looked as worried and slightly disturbed by how messed up, terrified and sheltered she looked. Even those in Team Terror didn't know the details. Deca gave everyone a look that said you don't want to know but I'm telling anyways as he started the tale of what he saw through the girl's memories which was just a part of the whole thing and let's say that the guys wanted to vomit at the end of the tale. Even Stain who saw his fair share of gruesome sights seemed disgusted. Holy shit. That's just that's evil. Twice yelled so shocked his two personalities agreed on it instantly. What the F? Koda uttered in disbelief with his eyes wide in horror. Katsuma was so shocked he couldn't say a word. And they called us evil. Tamura screeched while scratching his neck furiously. In the distance Deku saw the mist on Kurogiri's form vibrating an obvious sign that he was livid which Deku agreed with wholeheartedly. Boss I respect you but if you ever do that type of shit to a kid I'm burning you to the point you can't heal yourself and throw away your ashes. Dobby said flatly and Deku nodded in agreement. I would be very proud Dobby Kuan. I might be the underworld future king but I have morals and standards, and I'm drawing a line here. Deku said tired as he pinched the bridge of his nose and exhaled. Tamura looked at his brother. So you killed that dumb and took his quirk? The resident gamer asked and Deku grinned. Oh definitely. It will be very useful in the long run but I ripped his arms and let him be taken to Tartarus. In fact I wonder how it fused with my quirk. Deku mused to himself and quirk understanding started speaking. Overhaul is an emitter type quirk that allows the user to reconstruct any matter they touch as they please. It was first held by Kai Chizaki aka Overhaul before it was stolen by Deku Shigaraki aka the Villain Emperor. Karma by using Absorb for Occupy. The quirk has fully fused with the core of Absorb for Occupy and now can easily reconstruct the bodies of people and without the excruciating pains that used to be caused by the previous user or the need to rip the person apart to put them back together. Deku whistled at that, maybe he should get that one quirk sensei and doctor told him about called Diagnosis. It would make him able to heal anyone with a touch of his hand. It would be excellent addition for the League to have an instant healer. Young master I wish to remind you that we still have the esteemed guests in the basement. So you might want to greet them now. No need to keep them waiting after all. Kurogiri reminded about the prisoners and Deku nodded. Oh right, we don't want to keep the good folks that worked right under overprick waiting. No need to keep them waiting like that. Deku said with a dark smile as he got up from the couch and stretched a little. The rest knew exactly what he was gonna do and felt a shiver run down their spines. The white-haired mastermind grinned as he walked into the basement to find the beaten down eight percepts or seven now that chronostasis is dead. Oh wait Tabe and Didoro are dead too so that's two less members they were five now. Not that it mattered to him much anyways. Shin seemed to be the first to see Deku entering the basement prison as he growled with a cold glare. What have you done to overhaul? Where is our boss? Shin yelled in outrage as he glared daggers at Deku who smiled in amusement and mirthful satisfaction. Oh poor you? I can answer that. The bastard is being escorted with a police convoy to Tartarus as we speak. Armless and humiliated. And he is the least of your worries honestly. Deku said casually as he walked to the man and placed his now unloved hand on the man's face and gripped tightly to make sure he wouldn't be interrupted. As Deku started taking his quirk Shin yelled in absolute agony and flailed around but he was too well tied up to move much. As Deku finished he glared at the man. When you get to hell. Say hi to muscular for me. The white-haired boy said darkly as he slapped him in the face making him explode in a shower of blood covering the mastermind his other mates. Confession is an emitter-type quirk first held by Shin Nemoto then was stolen by Deku Shigaraki. The quirk allows the user to force his victim to answer with the truth after asking them a question. After fusing with Absorb for Occupy it now could work on multiple targets in the same time. Deku smirked at that and at the expression of the Yakuza members. The rest looked in disbelief and horror as they saw their own leader's quirk in action by this boy. The legendary quirk thief. Tengai uttered in shock as he gave Deku a terrified pleading look, pleading for mercy. Deku smirked in triumph as he grabbed Hekiji's face next and took his quirk, and boy did that not make him feel amazing. After taking the quirk Deku gave the man the same fate as his friend. Barrier is an emitter-type quirk that was first held by Hekiji Tengai then stolen by Deku Shigaraki using Absorb for Occupy. Barrier allows the user to materialize an extremely durable dome-shaped force field around themselves. The strength of the force field has been compared to that of a steel wall but in fact it is harder than diamonds. This quirk can be projected at a range of the user's choosing with said user themselves at the center. It is confirmed that the size affects the durability of the quirk. After fusing with Absorb for Occupy said problem is no more. Despite being very sturdy, 
the barrier can be broken if an extreme amount of power is used against it. Also, if the user become too weakened or injured, they become unable to summon more barriers. Deku turned to Yu Hojo and raised a brow at him. Well I guess you are next. Deku said casually ignoring the pleas for mercy. Hypocrites calling quirks a disease while you're attached to you own so much. Deku shook his head as he blew He-Man apart with a touch. Crystallize is an emitter-type quirk that was first held by Yu Hojo then was stolen by Deku Shigaraki using Absorb for Occupy. Quirk grants the user the ability to produce sharp, durable crystals from their skin. This power is effective for both close-ranged offense and defense. The user can grow their crystals into a sword around their arms. After fusing with Absorb for Occupy the user now can shoot the crystals from their palms like bullets. The range of the shots is 50 meters. Deku decided that the big guy was next since he was that scumbag Chizaki's manager. Placing his now hand that crackled with black lightning Deku grinned and the man flailed in agony and screamed bloody murder as he felt his quirk being ripped apart from him. Then when it was done Deku beheaded him instantly with his dark blade. Deku turned to the other two and took their quirks in the same time before blowing them to bloody juice on himself, the walls and ground. Mimicry is an emitter-type quirk first held by Joy Irinaka then was stolen by Deku Shigaraki using Absorb for Occupy. Quirk allows the user to merge their body and mind into an object, granting them full control over the object as if it were their own body. The user can only use this power on objects the size of a refrigerator or smaller. Larceny is an emitter-type quirk first held by Tuya Setsuno then was stolen by Deku Shigaraki using Absorb for Occupy Quirk allows the user to instantly relocate an object from someone else's possession to their own hands. They need to be able to see the target and there is a limit to size of what can be steal stolen. After fusing with Absorb for Occupy the quirk LR Shinai can be used to steal things the size of a large bag with the weight limit being 10 kilograms. Deku looked at the big guy who was left last and raised a skeptical brow as the man seemed fearless like he was prepared for whatever Deku could throw at him. Deku respected that and for it alone he will set him free when he is done. So he started the process of quirk transferring and Rappa stayed silent as he clenched his teeth. Strong Arm is a mutation type quirk that was first held by Kendo Rappa then was stolen by Deku Shigaraki. Quirk allows the user to rotate their shoulders at extreme speeds allowing them to attack their targets with a near-endless barrage of bullet punches. The quirk can only stay active for a few seconds at a time, but this is all the time needed to wear down most opponents. After fusing with Absorb for Occupy the quirk's strong arm can be active for 10 seconds before being deactivated. With that the white-haired mastermind snapped his fingers teleporting the strong-armed man to some local bar. Deku looked at the leftovers of the Yakuza members and scoffed. Karma caught up to you bastards, the white-haired mastermind whispered into the empty space. It was then that Toga came down and opened the door to speak with a bright smile on her face. Hey Dekakuin. Dinner is ready if you... The blonde vampire trailed off as she looked at the now bloodied Deku who was glaring at the beheaded man disgust. And her face heated up beyond description at the sight. It was hot and he looked just dreamy and cool and cute and... 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 Toga stared at him like he just descended from the heavens introduced himself as a god of blood and proposed to her while offering her half of his godhood. Deku has just noticed her and seems to come back to his senses as he looked around at the mess he created before looking at Toga sheepishly. I need a bath I think, was all he could say as he passed by the blonde girl who looked at him in awe, attraction and absolute lust. Deku sighed as he finished showering and dressing up as he thought how coldly he killed those guys. To be fair he felt a bit guilty about that but what could he do as he walked to the dining room which was as big as a cafeteria someone came running at him quickly and jumped into his chest. Ari has jumped into his embrace, no way in hell he was passing the offer. He hugged her tightly before he put her down and looked her up and down with a bright smile. Deku felt any guilt he had over killing the Chizaki followers evaporate instantly at seeing that they in fact tortured this angel. Actually he might revive them before it's too late to and kill them Eiji. Mr. Deku? Can I sit in your lap? Eri asked hopefully and Deku has completely forgotten what the hell was he thinking about as he picked the little unicorn and went to did in one of the tables with his other kids, Urarika-san, Toga-san and Melissa. Do I look nice in my dress Mr. Deku? Eri asked innocently. Deku was on the verge of crying at the sheer adorableness Eri was letting out. She was just too good for this world. Princess you look amazing. Deku assured as everyone started eating their dinner and chatting happily together. So whatever happened to that AH anyways? Koda asked as he drank some milk. Mr. Deku cut his arm said some stuff I couldn't hear but made him scream loudly. Eri answered. Deku gave her a horrified look. You saw that? Deku asked in shock and she nodded. Yes but I still think you are my hero. 
You are a nice person Mr. Deku. Eri said and Deku patted her head gently. The Udata Council. The brain. I believe that this raid was an absolute disaster I'm afraid. Super punch. Yes we were played into karma's trap like idiots. It's truly shameful. Need nap. The kid is smart he has a wild team like special operations military and is a master strategist. I spy. He was also capable of fighting me, Mirko and Endeavor on equal grounds for a good chunk of time. It seems his body is heavily modified even without his quirk. The brain? Modified you say? Need nap. How do? Super punch. I have a bad feeling about this. I spy. He could take a flash fire fist from Endeavor and a full powered kick from Mirko and not seem phased and he was fast enough to dodge my seals. Need nap. Then he is a combat expert and a very well trained one too. Someone like that with enhancement abilities are easily S-rank villains. I spy. Yes and he unfortunately played us to raid the base so he could sneak his team, take out the main members and take the child. Need nap, it was well thought of and calculated. He knew exactly what we would do in our weaknesses. The only thing that threw him off was Endeavor doing teamwork. Super punch, and B.O.Y. what a fight that was. The brain, then to sum up we were played like chess pieces by a 15 year old boy and dud exactly what he wanted and he had enough power to keep multiple top and skilled heroes at bay and a team of precise and organized members to bring down the Shai Hisaikai down. I spy, much to my regrets yes. Need nap, what wouldn't I give to have that boy in my classroom? Such a waste of amazing, amazing potential. The brain, what wouldn't I give to have him as my successful? I spy, I would give half of my merch collection and all of my money to have him as a member in my agency. Super punch. Indeed such a waste, the war with the commission would have been easier if he was on our ranks. I spy. Karma also broke Mirio. Need nap, identity. Broke. No. The brain. Yes I am very fond of young Togata do elaborate. I spy. Mirio met Eri but under my orders he didn't start a fight with overhaul to save her in a crowded area to not get people hurt. The brain. Very understandable indeed. Need nap. Very logical. I approve. I spy. Yes but. Unfortunately when Karma picked her up and Mirio tried to attack him she yelled at Mirio, telling him that he abandoned her and that he shouldn't hurt her hero. It broke him to no end. And Karma added salt to the wound saying that if he couldn't save a little girl then he he shouldn't call himself a hero. Super punch oh no? The brain? Oh dear. Need nap? Shit that must have been like a stab to the heart. Super punch. I can stop by your agency by coincidence and decide to give him a pep talk. I spy. That would be very valuable, generous and appreciated all might, thank you. The brain? Good idea Tashinori, proceed. Need nap? Yeah hate to admit it but you're the best at this stuff. Go get him a pickup talk. I spy. I still can't believe karma kidnapped a little girl. Super punch. Don't remind me should have been there myself Pierre be damned. The brain? I don't think she was kidnapped, I think karma in fact saved the girl. I spy? Super punch? Need nap? What do you mean? The brain? Well one of the interrogated Yakuza said that our white-haired nemesis was gonna make a deal, I think he was actually teaming up with the Shai Hisaikai but when he discovered the atrocities done to young Eri he decided to rescue her himself. Need nap? You really think that? I spy. Well he keeps speaking about corrupt heroes so it's safe to say he might have been a fan once in his life but discovered the dirt of the commission so he decided to clean it up, but he got a distrust to heroes so he went villainy instead. Need nap? Shit and the treatment as corkless helped too in that. Super punch, oh no. We should maybe reason with him? The brain, we could try but no guarantee he would listen. I spy, worth a shot if no more heroes will be killed even if they had it coming. Need nap, alright I'll ask Emmy to get us some way to contact him. The brain, thanks for the effort Izawa Kuen. I spy, yes appreciate it. Super punch, thanks folded hands light skin tone. Need nap, just hate wasting potential I hate so much. It has been two days since Eri was rescued from the eight precepts of death and since then she has been residing at the hideout. While she's still getting used to the new environment she has taken quite a liking to some of the league's members including the kids Nagant, Stain, Toga, Kurogiri, Tamura, Ochako, Melissa, Magna, Twice, Shinso, Gentle and La Brava and most importantly Deku was her favorite. As the girl was drinking a cup of milkshake at the counter, Izuku came into the bar. Good morning Kurogiri how's Eri doing today? Asked the leader as he put on his black vest of his suit preparing for today's activities. She's doing fine. Replied Kuro Jairi, I mean she still needs some time getting used to being in the league, but other than that she's fine. I see. Deku replied as he sat next to Eri. Said girl smiled brightly at him. She can smile now. It truly made Deku truly happy, now she was truly saved. Good morning Mr. Deku. 
Airy Airy said happily. Good morning Airy Chan. Decker replied rubbing her head gently. So, how are things going in the... Before the white-haired mastermind could finish his sentence however, she quickly backed off, keeping her distance. Weirded out by the little unicorn's behavior, the villain boss turned to the bartender with a questioning look. Kurogiri what's wrong with her? Deku asked sternly. She's scared of hurting people with her quirk, young master. Her quirk activated by mistake this morning and rewinded a MN apple to nothing, replied Kurogiri with a sigh. She has made people disappear in the past. Not only that, but for a girl her age, she's ridiculously smart and rational too. So imagine how accidentally murdering all of those people in the past while having such a pure mind would affect a child. Kurugiri was right. The first kill is always the hardest one. To see someone's life disappear in front of you, and knowing you were the one who caused it, it can shatter anyone's innocence. Sure, he has done it so much that his morale was long gone, but he understands how painful it must be for Aerie, especially given her age. He can still recall the nauseating feeling he got when he stabbed first killed, the feeling the of blades entering the hero's flesh, the screams in pain and worst of all, the despicable pleasure. If him doing such a thing could lead to passing out for two hours, he can't bear to imagine the impact it's having on her psyche. Turning back to Aerie, now sitting by the couch near the windowsill, peeking out to see the buildings in the distance, Izuku walked up to Aerie, sitting beside her again only for her to back off again. Seeing this, Deku's breathing felt funny. It was an emotion he hasn't felt in a while, and why it's coming back to him now was beyond him. Letting out a breath to calm his inner turmoil, he let his parental instincts take the wheel for this one. It's fine. Deku started gently, taking out a knife and cutting himself, only for the wound to heal almost immediately. You can't hurt me, not even I can hurt me, you can trust me. Seeing this, Airy Reach turned around hesitantly, facing him. Please tell us what's wrong? Asked Deku with the kindest voice he had. Looking down at her hand, she formed a fist as her arms started to tremble. I hurt so many people with my powers. They told me I was dangerous, that I was unwanted. You told me I wasn't unwanted, that all of you really do care for me and I trust you, but... Airy muttered, looking at him with teary eyes, Will you still want me if I accidentally hurt any of you? What if I snap again and hurt someone? Please, I don't want to get thrown out, I'll be good, I swear. Dear God, what have they done to her? Rot in hell, you bastards. Thought Deku in disgust and outrage. But it's okay, I'm happy here. I'm even smiling, see? Airy continued, smiling slightly but as much as she did before. Sorry, I think I might have forgotten how to smile well. Deku stayed silent at that for a bit as he stared at the little girl with a thoughtful look. Mr. Deku? Airy asked hesitantly. I see. Deku said quietly. The white-haired mastermind got up from the couch and picked up Airy in his arms. He walked towards Kurogiri and gave him a serious look. Take me to Sensei Kurogiri? Deku said with a frown. Kurogiri looked surprised at that. Young master but dash. That wasn't a request Kurogiri. Deku said sternly and Kurogiri nodded hesitantly as he opened a warp gate that Deku stepped through. Eri and Deku found themselves in a sunny tropical island in the Caribbean as they were now far away from Japan. The white-haired mastermind and the little unicorn walked together and Eri seemed to enjoy the weather of the island which was good because he will be sending her with her siblings here often when he is going to do things that they were too young to be traumatized by as a supervillain. The two walked for a bit in the sand of the beach until they reached a spot that seemed like a picnic spot with an umbrella in the middle of the place and on a seat was the over 200 years old supervillain whom ruled the underworld of villains since it started dressed in a Hawaiian shirt and shorts and drinking freaking lemonade like a retired businessman of the sorts. If Deku ever got the chance he would send a pick to All Might in his deathbed as a one big fat middle finger to the symbol of hypocrisy, it would be glorious seeing the emotional agony he experiences when he is on the verge of death knowing that his own goal was never accomplished too begin with. But that was a matter for another time as Deku now was in a mission. As Hei got closer they passed by the giant form of Gigantomachia whose face brightened up instantly seeing his young lord in the flesh coming to visit them. Welcome here young lord. Machia exclaimed loudly in booming joyful voice. Eri looked more surprised than startled by the giant which was good because he forgot about Machia when he brought her here. The voice of the giant made the two-century-old man stand up and walk to his successor with a smile on his scarred face. He was actually genuinely surprised since Deku only visits twice a month with Tamura and no more than that to focus on work which is something the supervillain respected. Hello Deku my boy, what is the reason for your sudden visit? Not that I'm complaining anyways. Raijin Shigaraki formerly known as All for One asked intrigued as he walked to the younger white-haired mastermind. It was rare for Deku to break his usual schedules, 
last time he came out of the blue was to introduce his new grandson young Koda and to say that the third generation Nomu process wasn't fascinating would be the biggest most obvious lie Raijin ever made. Raijin liked the boy from first meeting, it was like a younger but surprisingly less childish Tamura. And the second time was also to introduce young Mahoro and young Katsuma to him. They were an adorable pair of kids and very endearing. His few year scheme for grandkids is still on motion but those will do for now. It was meaning that this time it's a new child and the villain really hoped it's a girl. Hello my boy, am I right to assume it's a new grandchild for me to spoil? Raijin asked and Deku chuckled in amusement. You can say that, Arichan the sensei, my teacher, mentor, predecessor and father figure. He can be like a grandfather to you, Deku said nudging her to go say hi. Ari shuffled awkwardly for a bit before looking at the poorly scarred man and speaking. Hello sir, my my name is Ari. Mr. Deku saved Lu from a group of bad Yakuza. Ari introduced herself. The old villain frowned as he looked at his successor. When you said you wiped out an entire Yakuza clan to save someone from being a lab rat? Raijin asked and Deku sighed in exhaustion as he nodded. I see I was told that you have a fascinating quirk young Ari. The first and only class 6 healing quirk. Raijin inquired and Ari seemed uncomfortable. My quirk hurts people. It's as Chizaki told me bad. Ari said and Deku patted her head. No quirk is bad Ari-chan. You can use it to help people in fact we are here to prove it to you. Deku smiled as he motioned to his teacher. Sensei had something called quirk notification so when he touches you your quirk will stop so use it on him. You can help him feel better. Deku said cheerfully. Ari looked surprised at that as she glanced at the probably surprised man. It was hard to read a faceless man. She thought about it for a bit, on one hand she could hurt him but on the other she could help him as Muster Deku said so they will give it a chance. Eri nodded her head at Deku and he motioned for her to go to his sensei. The previous supervillain looked at Deku for a bit who nodded. So, you are my new granddaughter? I already met your siblings so why don't we get to know each other? Raijin asked gently as he knelt down and spread his arms inviting the little girl to a hug. He spoke like he used to speak to Tenko when he was her age to comfort her. Ari nodded her head in acceptance if he was like Mr. Deku, if he was his teacher then he is a good person for sure. Ari hugged the two century old man and her horns started glowing with glowing golden energy that covered them both. Deku watched in fascination as in less than a minute his sensei's face started reverting from its current state to what it used to be, the scar tissue reformed into smooth skin and a nose appeared as well as eye sockets and hair grew on the man's skull. The man was back to his prime in less than a minute by the little girl and her endlessly fascinating quirk. It was beautiful to say the least. Raijin opened his closed eyes for the first time in years as he took on his surroundings, it was more beautiful than what a sensory quirk offered you. The white-haired man looked at his successor as he picked up his adopted granddaughter and smiled as he took a deep breath of air. God how he missed a full breath without support equipment. This is truly refreshing my boy, I can see how you said that this quirk will be the greatest healing quirk in history, my previously unhealable injuries are gone like they never existed. The supervillain looked at Ari with a smile. See young lady? You helped me? The man said cheerfully and she beamed. Are really? Ari asked hopefully. Ari looked at him in confusion. I helped you? But I did not activate? Asked Ari in confusion and worry. Yes my dear. Thank you for using your quirk on me. I'm feeling much better now. Raijin smiled warmly. And your desire to help me activated your quirk which is natural with healing quirks? He explained. Looking at herself she felt so weird. It was the first time her quirk has ever helped someone. It wasn't like before it was different it felt so heartwarming so refreshing it felt so good. Ari's doubts were replaced by confusion. Her quirk the same one that was said to only cause harm actually helped someone. The man looked so happy and relaxed too. Was it really her doing? You see Ari? Asked Deku with a bright smile patting her gently in the head. You are wanted. You have a very unique ability one that can save many lives and make many people happy. If you can control this power, this man won't be the last person you make smile. They say you're dangerous? Ignore them. I'll make sure that they will beg for you to help them once you show them what you can really do with your powers, Deku said with a grin. He was happy this worked out and now his sensei can enjoy his retirement without coughing and staying on life support. Hearing this, Ari smiled brightly and looked at Deku from her new grandfather's arms. You, you mean it? Asked Ari tearing up with joy. Of course. You don't have to worry about hurting anyone anymore Ari, because I will help you control your quirk. Izuku smiled at her, picking her up in his arms from taking her from the protesting ex-supervillain. Ari nodded her head vigorously at the offer. Yes please. I want to help people with my power like you helped me Mr. Deku. 
Eri said happily and Deku nodded his head. Hey Makia. Deku called out and the giant perked up as HF looked at Deku with anticipation. Yes young lord? Makia asked cheerfully. Why don't you get Eri on your back and take a tour around the island? My daughter could use some tourism? Deku smiled and Makia nodded vigorously. Yes young lord. As you wish. Makia said as Deku placed Eri on his back with moving objects, then Makia took off with a squealing unicorn on his back. It was then that the two warped into the supervillain's villa to have a chat over some wine and a nice meal. So, are you planning to return to the business now that and no offense you don't look like a mushed potato for a face? Deku asked as he took a bite of his steak. The supervillain chuckled at that as he shook his head at the question in negative. Oh no not at all. Raijin Shigaraki known to everyone as all for one, the worst villain in the history of Japan replies calmly without skipping a beat. I've spent six years. On life support with next to no chances of recovery. Is something that changes your perspective on life. Two centuries of undisputed lordship over the Japanese underworld is enough. The world of villains needs some new perspective to evolve. Raijin said cheerfully as he sipped from his wine glass and enjoyed the flavor and savored it. He doesn't have to add that Deku was and still is his preferred successor. There was a reason why Raijin left him his money, contacts and, although that one was slightly different and much more fascinating and powerful, his own very quirk or at the very least a copy of it. Deku's collection of quirks is pathetically small when compared to Raijin's, and he can only keep three active at once. But Raijin was still proud and assured his successor that it would change. When Raijin was his age he could only keep a single quirk active and he got it at four. Deku could use three and it has been only six months so Raijin was an enormously proud master and father right now, and he was proud of Tamir's quirk awakening too, these two were growing into fine villains he approves. Plus I am enjoying retirement. Hearing about how my dear successor and adopted son is running circles around heroes, how he is murdering and exposing commission lackeys and making the government look like the absolute buffoons they are is better and more satisfying than any any scheme I ever did. Plus you are doing much better in leadership than me. Raijin said amused and supremely proud. Deku blushed under the praise and smiled. Thanks I had a very good teacher. And curriculum in villainy was enough to cover everything I needed from how to gather money, info weapons and even subordinates to my cause. So it's all thanks to you? Deku said as he sipped his glass of wine and the older man waved his hand dismissively. Not at all my boy the quirks you chose first were so simple I didn't think much of them. Especially reading touch but you wanted it to bond with others, to see their pain and connect with them. And pull them into your side. Such cunning move never came to my old mind. I am proud. And living parasite? Boy I never saw the potential of that quirk and it was one of the first ones I acquired. You have truly succeeded me Deku and I am waiting for how you will do what I failed at, or at least did not fully finish. Changing society to the better and make sure only the good heroes stick around, Raijin said and Deku smiled brightly. I'll make sure you are proud sensei, Deku said. I don't have the slightest doubt you will. Raijin smiled as he ruffled the boy's already messy hair. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey through what if Deku became the villain emperor, I hope you found it as intriguing and thought-provoking as we did. A big shout out to Decuvers for crafting such a compelling story. Don't forget to check out their profile on Archive of Our Own for more amazing works. The link is in the description below. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to What If Deku 2.0 for more fascinating explorations into the world of fanfiction and fantasy. Your support helps us create more content like this, and we're always excited to hear your thoughts and suggestions in the comments section. See you guys in the next video.